welcome you to Oxford County Library's first installment of our virtual cookbook club, Oxford Eats. In this series, we are going to explore some of the Oxford County Library cookbooks and our kitchen lending library, which you have access to with your Oxford County Library card. So today, we're going to make some fresh pasta from this recipe book, The Pasta Bible. We will also be making a homemade balsamic vinaigrette to go with lettuce that we grew in our tower garden that you can see over there. So the tower garden is new to the library and it allows you to grow fresh produce from seed and then you can grow vegetables all year long. The tower gardens can be found in the Ingersoll and Tilsenburg libraries and we hope to be able to use them for programs in the near future. Keep an eye out at those branches, maybe you'll see it out on the floor sometime. So moving ahead with making our fresh pasta, uh, just so you know, you can buy pasta specific flour from the grocery store, which is what we made right here. And this is already cooked. Uh, but we are gonna use the recipe, like I said, out of the pasta Bible, which uses all purpose flour. So that's what we're gonna do. So to get started with making fresh pasta, the recipe calls for flour, salt, and eggs. So we need two and three quarters cup of flour, a teaspoon of salt, and three eggs. So to begin, we have clean hands, we have a clean surface, and we are going to make a mound with our flour with a well in the middle for the eggs. So mounding the flour with a well, three eggs gets cracked into the center of the well, your teaspoon of salt gets added to the eggs and then you slowly mix it all together without breaking the sides of the well. So we don't want the eggs to spill over. Let's do it. Okay. So when making your well, make sure that your sides are fairly high because once you put the eggs in there, you don't want them to run over onto the table. So now we're going to mix all the eggs and the salt together while slowly drawing the flour into it. So once your egg is no longer liquid, you can start taking the flour from the outsides and bringing it in and then start kneading your dough, so kneading everything all together. The Pasta Bible recipe also includes Cook's Tips, and it says if your dough is feeling too dry, which ours is, you can add cold water to the recipe by a small amount. So I'm going to start with a teaspoon of cold water, and then Leslie will knead it again, and then we just add if needed. Another cook's tip in this recipe is to not skimp on the kneading, <laughs> that it has to be kneaded for a long time and your arms are going to get sore. All right, we have a good dough ball now. We did have to add some water to our dough ball because it was a little dry. Uh, the recipe calls for quite a bit of flour and not a lot of liquid. So now you have to wrap your dough ball in some clear saran wrap. So it has to sit for 15 to 20 minutes to proof at room temperature. While our pasta dough is proofing in the saran wrap behind us, we are going to make a homemade balsamic vinaigrette. So to make balsamic vinaigrette, you need olive oil, balsamic vinegar, a garlic clove, and some Dijon mustard. You can also add salt and pepper to yours as well. So we're going to take our trusty little jar here that actually already has the recipe on it. And we need to start with 
this one here and fill right to the line. So that is our olive oil. And then this bottle is really cool, has the measurement on it. And then we need to add the balsamic vinegar. So I've already peeled a garlic clove. I have a lovely garlic press here. And we are going to squeeze that. garlic just goes right in there as well. Make sure you get as much garlic in as you can. Okay, and then one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. So now we're just going to trim a few pieces of lettuce off to make our fresh salad to go with our homemade dressing. So there you have it, fresh ingredients for the perfect side dish. So our pasta dough has been proofing in the saran wrap for at least 20 minutes. So now we need to unwrap it, cut it in half, and then cut it in half again. So while Shannon is prepping the dough, a few other things that we do have in our kitchen library. We have a ravioli, or a raviolera, should I say, and it's a ravioli making contraption, I guess you could call it. Uh, we also carry a couple of rolling pins. And then over here, what we will be using is our lovely pasta maker. So you can find the kitchen library on our website, on our www.ocl.net, under services. So now I have taken a quarter of the dough, and I've wrapped up the rest of it back into the saran wrap. And I flattened it as best as I can on a floured cutting board with my hands, you could also use a rolling pin to get a little more flat. And we're going to bring the camera close because it is time to use the pasta maker machine. So our dough needs to be in a rough rectangle shape that is within the width of the pasta maker. And there's a crank handle on the end. This end of the pasta maker has two rollers to thin and stretch the dough. So we're going to put it in. And there we have one pass through and we need to fold it in thirds and sort of squish it down again. But now this time we need to turn the dough this way and feed it through the machine. And we're going to do this process about five passes through the machine.
right, so now that that's done, we are going to switch it because we did that on setting one. So now we're going to move to setting two and we're gonna run it through once, setting three, run it through once, all the way up to setting nine. So one at a time so that the dough gets thinner and longer each time. And this time now there's no more folding. We are just letting it come through the machine, no more folding. Last one, we're gonna to go to setting nine. A very long noodle. <laughs> so now that that's done, all nine settings, we are able to pass it through the other two types of rollers. So you just pop off the handle and move it down. So we're going to cut some spaghetti, which is in the first slot right here. And this one here is for fettuccine. We believe that this is more like spaghettini. It comes out as very small, thin noodles. And then the same process, you just feed the entire length of the noodle and crank. go. So now this is very, very long. You can cut this in half or cut this up and then they need to go on a tray or a floured cloth to dry for at least 15 minutes. <laughs> so now we've rolled out some more dough and we will show you the fettuccine setting. There we go, and these noodles, same thing. You can cut them to the length that you'd like, and then they go into a container with flour to dry for at least 15 minutes before cooking. And remember, if you don't have a pasta maker at home, you can use the rolling pin and just slice it really thin with the knife. Okay, so we're ready to cook the noodles. The noodles are dry in the tray. So you only need to put them in boiling water for about two to three minutes. They don't take very long at all to cook. We have some pasta sauce over here on the go. If you'd like to make your own pasta sauce recipe, we do have this book here just called Spaghetti Sauces that you can find in our Oxford County Library catalog, or you can use canned, whatever you prefer. And if you're looking for a different version of our noodle recipe, we have this book, Chloe's Vegan Italian Kitchen, that shows you some vegan recipes and some options. You can find those and the other pasta books and salad books in our catalog at www.ocl.net. So we're going to cook up some spaghetti and we'll show you when it's all done. Well, there you have it. Pasta from scratch. We got fresh salad from the Tower Garden with homemade dressing and you can make your own homemade sauce as well but we did use a canned sauce and just threw some extra spices in there. Visit our website www.ocl.net to place a hold on any of these books, look at other cookbooks that we have in our collection and check out the Kitchen Lending Library under services to see what kind of cool gadgets you can borrow with your library card.
And don't forget to keep your eyes open for another episode of Oxford Eats. We'll be coming to you soon. Stay connected with the Oxford County Library online. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So thanks for joining us today. Enjoy your eats. Bye.